This lamp is by far one of the creepiest lamps I've come across so far in a sort of kind of good way. It's a, a sensor lamp that detects movement, but it doesn't use the passive infrared system. Whereas the nipple lamps have this sort of little uh, dome and they actually rely on, you know, radiated body heat actually being detected through that. This one doesn't. This uses microwave energy to actually, and I say microwave, don't immediately think you're a cooker microwave. It uses very low level RF energy. And it's described on the listing as a 5 watt 10 LED microwave at 5.8 gigahertz, which is quite high frequency, radar motion ambient light bulb. And it was sold by a seller called UK Solar Seller, which is not in the UK at all. It's a typical Chinese seller, but call themselves UK Solar Seller. So, uh, inside the lamp, and this is where I'm going to have to apologise to people with headphones, and that's your clue to turn your headphones down a little bit, because it's got this threaded aluminium housing, and uh, just for maximum effect, oh, yeah, it's, it's unpleasant. But if you screw that off, inside is this interesting little circuit board that has a sort of little zigzaggy track, and then it's got this antenna sticking up. And a little LDR. The LDR is very sensitive. There's no way to adjust it. I had to say that when I first got this, I thought the thing was faulty because it just wasn't lighting up. Uh, more impressively, I took the cover off and I'm looking at it and every time you touch the heat sink, the LEDs glowed very slightly. I think that's just capacitive coupling though. It's an oddity, very weird. Uh, because bear in mind, it doesn't take much to make an LED glow. And yeah, it's just odd when you touch the casing, no major uh, leakage. You don't certainly don't feel a tingle, and it's certainly not live. But uh, it made the LEDs glow, so that's that's a bit weird. But anyway, um, here's how it works. Because um, it works completely different different to uh, the passive infrared ones, because this can actually see through walls. And I have to say, I... You know, when I tested it and discovered that the reason it wasn't initially working was because I had a very small light on the room and just that low level ambient light was actually triggering the photocell and stopping it. Once I'd uh, found that was the issue, I found that no matter where you go, you just can't hide. It doesn't matter. With this one, if you just step behind the door and it can't see you, then you can just wait and it'll trigger when you walk in. This one, you had to stay very still, completely out of sight of it. No sight, you know, not in line at all. It it can just see through everything and bounce the radio waves through down corridors and rooms in the house. As soon as you just moved your hand, it would light. It was just very sort of spooky in that way, but neat. I like the fact that there's a little module on top because that suggests that possibly that module could be used for other things. It's also worth mentioning that they use these little Doppler effects. Uh, I'm guessing it's Doppler. Uh, but they use the little radar units in conjunction in really posh, expensive uh, alarm systems in conjunction with the pass infrared detector. And it takes both of them being triggered. Well, you can set it for one or the other, but usually it takes both being triggered and that prevents rogue um, pick up from the passive infrared because something else has to be detected in the room by this and triggering of the infrared to actually trip the alarm so it's supposed to be sort of a low nuisance tripping but here is the theory so I'm going to demonstrate it with the sound wave principle now you know when you're standing next to a road and a car's coming along the road I'm guessing that this uses the Doppler effect it's the easiest way to do it uh, so here's the car approaching and here's the car leaving. So very crude cars. And that's you standing there, not in the middle of the road, obviously. And as this car's coming towards you, you know how when it, a motorbike's a good example because of the noise they make. Uh, you know how when a motorbike passes you, it, as it approaches, it, it's one pitch and then it changes. So you hear sort of, and it passes. That's because... As it's generating that sound, it's actually getting closer to you at the same time. And that means those sound waves are much closer and they appear higher pitched than the actual noise it's making. And likewise, once it's passed, it suddenly changes pitch because the same sound is being emitted. But as it's going away, the sound waves are actually getting further apart because as they're being generated, it's moving further away each time. And that's why you get that sudden pitch shift. So what the uh, what this lamp does, as far as I know this uses that principle, is something that was very similar to another type of alarm sensor, the ultrasonic alarm sensor, which was very short-lived. They, they didn't keep the ultrasonic sensors, rim sensors, 
uh, around for very long. They were just so prone to false tripping. But they sent out ultrasonic sound and simply looked for the reflection of the ultrasonic. And if nothing in the room was moving, then it would all come back at exactly the same frequency. But if something in the room was moving towards the sensor or away from it, the frequency would shift. And simply, all it did was uh, the sensor picked up the... The, it filtered out the frequency that was being transmitted, and if there was a frequency on either side of that, it would actually trip the alarm. This, I'm guessing, uses the same thing. So the lamp here is sending out little pulses of radio energy, very low level. And as long as you're standing still, so that's, a, that's you standing still with your hands up in the air, the radio waves will strike you, and then they'll bounce back off. And because you're completely still, they go back at the same frequency. And I'm guessing... I, I don't know which bit's actually transmitting and receiving here because radio circuitry is just a black art, but I'm guessing the etched antenna may be the transmitter. I'm not sure about that, though. I'm really am not sure. I shall investigate. I can see a chip under here, so we'll see if we can get a number off that. I will have to desolder it uh, to take it to bits, but you know what? That's what I got the lamp for, so we can take it to bits. But anyway, if you're moving towards or away from the lamp, that reflected signal will then change frequency slightly. If you're moving uh, away, it would uh, be a lower frequency. If you're moving towards it, it would be a higher frequency. And it must just detect that either side of that, what frequency was it? 5.8 gigahertz. Or, if you like, back to the future, 5.8 gigahertz, which sounds so much better. Uh, so, yeah, that's the technique it uses. I also notice this is designed for different numbers of LEDs, uh, which is interesting. It's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 half-watt chips. The power consumption was about 6 watts, um, I'm guessing, and it was virtually nothing when it was just in standby. So I'm guessing most of that power is going into the LEDs. So, uh, right, I think we need to investigate this further. So the module has the power supply, which the power supply, that's very typical of these lamps, is screwed in to the base here. And it's just one of those common switch mode power supplies, but this one's obviously rated for the sort of higher 6 watts. And I'm not sure the configuration of the LEDs. I shall test that and see what sort of voltage it's putting out, but it'll probably be... Either they'll all be in series or it'll be a series parallel array of the LEDs to make up the sort of voltage that it's putting out at the particular current that is driving the LEDs. But I'm going to pause momentarily because I need to desolder this uh, to see what's uh, inside it, to get these circuit boards apart and see what that chip says. So I'll be back in a moment. Oh dear, I'm flummoxed. I'm perplexed. The chip in the bottom, I, I was like... Thinking this was going to be a specialist, you know, microwave detection chip. And then I was also going, ha ha, maybe it's a BISS0001, but it's very unlikely because that's a password infrared chip. No, it is in fact a BISS0001 that has been repurposed as a microwave chip. How? And there's a patent on Google just about that subject, and I have to say... As soon as you go into, like, super high-tech microwave energy, it all becomes a bit of a black art for me. But it appears that the Doppler thing, it's looking for a phase shift between the two antennas, as far as I can see, and then converting that to a small voltage signal, which, because the BISS0001 has loads of op-amps designed for buffering up the standard password infrared sensor, it just repurposes those. It just uses it as a universal chip with all these levels, with these threshold detectors and the light sensor and everything like that. And it just fudges it and uses it to detect modulation from this microwave sensor. I, now, I don't know where to start with this. Um, it's got one little transistor type thing, which is marked 7Y and then a small 3 I had a search, I typed in microwave 7Y3. I, I really don't know if this is just basically a physical oscillator based on a, a selection of capacitors here that appear to be in parallel, maybe to fine-tune a value. There's other ceramic capacitors over here. Resistors and then the etched track. And other there are other pads that are almost possibly acting like very accurate high, you know, low-value capacitors in conjunction with the grounded plane the other side 
of the printed circuit board. So I'm guessing that a lot of the science is on this circuit board material and it's to do with very accurate track lengths and pads forming capacitance that it is ultimately a little module designed to oscillate at a fixed frequency. Um, but goodness knows uh, how they're getting this sort of voltage shift uh, unless that oscillator is you know, physically disturbed by movement in its vicinity uh, using the because it does uh, seem to operate in the Doppler effect. The two main components down here beside the uh, BISS0001 are the voltage regulator um, and there is a, a transistor over here that appears to be switching the output to the LEDs. There is now a look at it, another little transistor called 1AM. I think that's a fairly standard transistor, is it not? Um, uh, this diode is not, the fact it's a glass diode, I wonder if that's to do with anything to do with the microwave detection, but I, I don't know about that. I, I'm under the impression that that's all been done for the three pin end of the board, which is just ceramic capacitors and resistors. It's odd and perplexing. I really don't know enough about the Doppler modules, but I will say that you go and search for Doppler module and Alibaba, Aliexpress is just covered in trays and trays of these little modules that are just aimed at this application, with or without the LDR fitted and sometimes the holes for it, but not the not fitted. So, um, oh, uh, I'm just going to put it down. This is the microwave black magic. Um, that's all. That's as far as I can go. I'm not uh, into the subject. Deep. It's such a complex subject. It is basically its own field of electronics. And only, the only people that are going to really fully appreciate that are the people who deal with microwave transmitters and antennas all the time. But what a surprise that it's using such a standard chip and just repurposing it with this for a result that was very good. I have to say its detection was extremely good. Um, going to the uh, LED board here, this uh, board has the LEDs wired as two parallel pairs. Uh, you'll see the pins are still on here. Uh, that same thing, because it's a solid, it's the aluminum core PCB on a heat sink, very hard to desolder those connections because they were very big. They were also being used as structural support. Basically speaking, the voltage from the power supply here was coming on. It was going to this unit and regulated down and then switched to these LEDs via those two pins, but the actual power supply came straight onto this board, just solder pads on it. The LEDs are wired as two parallel circuits of five in series. So that would suggest um, about 15 volts at about the 300 milliamps being split between the two of them, is that right? Yes, that is right, uh, 15 volts. That would be about the five watts. Yes, that is about right. So um, yes, a perplexing, I'm disappointed that it's not some fancy chip and it wasn't, you know, there's going to be some data sheet and uh, it was going to just explain everything and instead it's just left me even just perplexed. That's all I can describe it. I mean, look at it. It's just, that's it. One little transistor, the antennas and some capacitors. That's just, that's just weird.